Susan, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here and thank you for the day you've spent with us so far. And I know tomorrow you're also spending some time doing further and deeper training. But you're here as a coach in safeguarding. And I'm wondering if the parents, if a lot of our stakeholders actually understand what safeguarding actually is. And I'd just like you to explain in your own words what safeguarding is and what's brought you to the position where you can be a coach for safeguarding in a great school like ours. And this is a lovely school. And thank, thank you, you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Safeguarding is what everything we do. Mm. It's everything we do as parents, yeah. as educators, as society mm. to ensure our children can grow up fulfilled, happy and safe, whether in the real world or online. And having a school like yours that is so committed mm. to training all your staff so that they are proactive in seeing signs where children may be worried about something. Mm. Because it's not just about keeping yourself physically safe, it's about mental well-being as well. Of course. How do we look after these children and give them the language, the vocabulary to be able to tell us how we can help them as well. Um, for myself, just like you, many years ago I started many. as a head teacher. I've been a head teacher in international schools, I'm a lead inspector for BSO and a, a lead improvement partner with COBIS. All those, and those two really good organisations so prioritise safeguarding. Um, my, as a, when I was a teacher and as a head, I believe firmly that a child needs an advocate and every teacher needs to be aware of how a child develops mentally, physically yeah. and those signs that might indicate that something isn't going wrong. Mm. And we have an absolute duty to look after the children in our care. And when I meet a school where they prioritise safeguarding, mm. it's not cheap to bring me over down. No, no, I. It's not cheap. Plus, it's a whole day of your staff mm. sat there listening to quite uncomfortable, situ quite uncomfortable information and challenging me and asking and their professional curiosity about mm. how could they make it the best school possible. Yes, yeah, yeah. And when we're, when we're educating children, I know I'm teaching you to suck eggs here, Darren. We don't just go academically. We look at their well-being. Mm. We look at their mental physical, social and emotional development mm. and we put the two together to develop well-rounded global citizens. Absolutely. And thank you for that commitment. You must be a trailblazer in this area. I, I, think, I think we are in, in Turkey. I have, a, I have a, another question for you. You, you raised in, uh, in your talk so far many, many uh, red flags that we should be looking out for. And I'd like your opinion, please, on the development of artificial intelligence. You talked a lot about it, the way that it's actually, you know, maybe corrupting uh, the safeguarding agenda. And it's, been, it's got a prolification. Is there anything a school like ours can do to help our children safeguard better online? Remain safe online. Well, mm. it doesn't just start at school. It no. starts at home as well. Mm no unfiltered access to the internet. Right, yeah. I was talking to your IT lead, you've got yeah. really good filtering and monitoring systems mm. which you need to be checking all the time. Yes, yeah. You need to realise, and um, I'm not an expert in AI, how how things are changing so rapidly. Mm. But do you know what Darren, it comes from making those children aware of, they can say no, making them aware that mm. if somebody contacts them online mm. they don't have to accept it mm. it's modeling those standards very good yeah but home needs to help as well mm. if a child is on a phone they can be clicking onto anything mm. if they're looking and i'm a terrible for this darren looking at um youtube shorts i start looking at hairdressing then i look at a dog mm. well if they click on something that is above their age range those algorithms mm. will ensure the next thing they see is pushing it further and further and further. And we need to say no to our yeah, children. Of course. And filter that internet. So you said it actually, you know, it starts with the parents. And maybe one of our next steps is to involve the oh, parents that would be brilliant yeah, because in the safeguarding you know, agenda. How many parents yeah. know themselves how mm. to how to stop the we don't we don't want children being deprived of the wonders of the internet, mm. but we want them safe. Of course. And unfortunately there are people out there. Yeah 
who will you corrupt the use of the yeah. internet to get to our children? Well, thank you very much, Susan. I know my DSLs, my DSLs being the most trained people in school in safeguarding and looking forward to spending another half day with you tomorrow to upskill themselves Excellent. and to become even better at what they do. Thank so you. So thank you for coming all this and way. And thank you for your commitment as a school to ensuring that every child in this school knows how to keep safe and every adult knows their role within it. You must be a trailblazer here, you must be. I suspect in Turkey we are. <laughs>